percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, Lee John Top. So, Top Fire Script. Let's get right into today's video. Circle and Ripple are going after Tether. And I'm going to leave Ripple out of this because Circle already started the game for it. Welcome back to today's doubleheader. I had to make this. There's a couple other videos that I want to make, but this one has to be out right now. We're going to get into a clip by Caroline Hill. She is the Senior Director of Global Policy and Regulatory Strategy at Circle. And previously, she worked at the U.S. Department of Treasury for seven years, terrorist financing and financial crimes. So she knows exactly what she's talking about and she knows very well what's coming down the pipelines and why are they saying the things they're saying. In a minute, we're going to get into that clip. But first, we got so much information, I got to squeeze it in today's doubleheader. You guys remember Trust Bridges and Money Flows that was published by the IMF this year, March of this year. And you guys, of course, know this public footage that I've retained and I've showed you guys many times, adding it to other documents referencing to you what he's actually saying potentially fast and wide adoption of a global stable coin potentially a global currency governed only by the incentives of a private company only by the incentives of a private company is something that will deserve and will receive the highest level of regulatory expectations and all the puzzle pieces are falling right in place that makes perfect sense now and it makes perfect sense with what they're doing behind the scenes. And here's the document. A public solution potentially run by a regulated private entity. A ripple is a regulated private entity. Has key advantages such as tackling the coordination problem around centralizing participation and liquidity provision, offering clear and trusted governance and operational stability, and providing full compatibility with financial integrity standards. And it even goes on to say, if the tokenized money is issued by an already closely regulated institution or central bank, trust costs decrease further. So Ripple checks off all the boxes here. The writing's on the wall. You guys, I mean, if you guys understand this now fully, you know this thing is going to blow up. And the next couple of videos that I have coming for you with usdx usdr whatever we want to call the ripple stablecoin and xrp this is huge this has got to be one of the most iconic announcements in ripple history in my opinion and i'll tell you why in my next episode but let's get into why tether is going to collapse so you guys know i've been talking about how tether is very shady we're going to go over that today but everything made perfect sense today and i came across this tweet as well by ali he goes on to say, Ripple's yet-to-be-released USDC-backed stablecoin will lead to the implosion of Tether. And he's not crazy. Circle's policy directors are saying the same thing. And he states why? Because the reserve assets will be audited by a third-party accounting firm. This is what Ripple went on to say today. Backed by one-to-one -one cash reserve, Ripple's stablecoin is designed to ensure transparency and reliability. Once the stablecoin is available, Ripple will publish monthly attestations of the assets. And what's very, very sketchy here is before this was made public, you know Tether just started being transparent. But what's even more shady, two days ago, yes, you heard that right, two days ago, Tether completed their first SOC2 type audit. This is like a very high level audit. Um, but again, they're doing this in 2024. Ripple has been compliant under the CO2 since 2021. But besides that, the fact that Tether just did this two days ago, and we have Caroline Hill stating this about Tether. Some of those companies that you just mentioned have U.S. touch points, and I think that the U.S. government should 
ensure that it's using its authorities when there are those U.S. touch points. If Treasury feels like it doesn't have the authorities, I know that it sent a, a number of proposals to Congress late last year around expanding their authorities uh, to cover some of those activities. I personally believe that no company should be allowed to reference the U.S. dollar without having those democratic values inside, inside the company, inside their U.S. dollar-backed stablecoin. And so I think if, if Treasury thinks that it needs additional authorities to go over that, then I think this committee should consider that. So to those U.S. touch points, um, U.S. financial services company Cantor Fitzgerald reportedly manages Tether's $72 billion portfolio of Treasury bonds giving him access to U.S. dollars. Cantor's enabling of terror and illicit activities across the globe is unacceptable. Uh, Ms. Hill, given Tether's nexus to the U.S. financial system through Cantor Fitzgerald, does Treasury already have the authority to take action? And what should we be doing about American-regulated companies like Cantor? I would think that the Treasury Department would have the authority to take action given this U.S. touch point, yes. Um, and I hope that they're looking at this seriously given Tether's reputation as, as well as the data that we've seen that they're contributing to terrorist financing and other malign activities. The U.S. government should use all of its existing tools to go after these platforms. Many recent enforcement and actions in the crypto anti-money laundering space are good news. Accountability should happen. And then that was also an individual from Circle's policy directors. I forgot his name, but they were all there. That was all this year. Circle is targeting Tether and they're saying they're not being transparent, but I'm pretty sure the whole world knows Tether isn't being transparent. Tether used fake bank accounts uh, just last year. Give me an effing break, folks. Come on. And then in 2021, Tether was asking the court to block some documents from being released. And then in 2019, Tether was going to be investigated. And you know what that caused? A $10 billion in an hour collapse in the whole crypto ecosystem. And they had to pay a fine. Like... They did the wrongdoings. They ended up paying $18 million in fines. And guess what? They also paid another fine, $42.5 million. And this was October of 2021. There is fines left, right, and center. There's fake bank accounts being opened up with falsified documents. Since day one, I've said Tether is a problem. And I know... It's a very, very, I don't know what word to use, but tether collapsing is not good for the ecosystem. But in my opinion, I don't see tether lasting 10 years whatsoever, especially, especially with what's coming down the pipelines with regulatory certainty and what circle and what ripple is building. Tether could just go away, but tether might stick around if it's heavily corrupted, right? Because if they're all in on it, we already know with the SEC how corrupt they are and how far Tether has come, it may stick around for a couple of years. And for any individuals that got into Obima, it did take a massive pump today. It was up 600% at one point. I did post it on my YouTube because I couldn't make a video in time. But take profits, don't be greedy, not financial advice. I don't know how higher this is going to go but everybody should be in the money. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, quick recap. You heard Caroline Hill. That was this year, just a couple months ago, talking about how Tether needs to be investigated. We are going to be in for a storm. And trust me, I don't want it to happen. I don't want Tether to go to collapse because it's going to be bad for everything. I mean, XRP could come down to 20 cents, 10 cents, if Tether collapses. Bitcoin will come down to 30,000, 29,000, God knows. But if Tether collapses, you guys all know it's not going to be good for the market. But for all the OG individuals in crypto, it'll just be another wave. It'll just be another bump. We will eventually get back to where we were. But just know this whole ecosystem is so brand new. Just look at it from that perspective. 
It's about, let's just be conservative and say it's 12 years old. 12 years, folks. It's a baby. The stock market has been out longer than any of us right now. At, there's nobody living when since day one since the stock market was opened. This thing is infancy stages. It's a baby. 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now. Do you know how big this whole ecosystem is going to get? So with that being said, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. The writing's on the wall. The IMF told us. Jerome Powell told us. They're all telling you. The ones with the highly level brain cells will understand. And the ones with the Alibaba brain cells will just not get it. We'll be back with another video. With the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. <laughs> I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be understand the utility. If there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer, there will be value in the token.